Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel. Give this video a like. Glad you're here. Podcast below in the description as well. Sponsored by Tito's Handmade Vodka. Yes, we are. Number one vodka in America. All right, John. Instant reaction to the college football playoff rankings. The rankings just came out. We just watched the show. Georgia at one, unbeaten. Alabama at two, seven and one. Michigan State, eight and oh. They're at three. Oregon is seven and one. They're at four. Top four teams go to the playoff in the end, but not this poll necessarily. Ohio State, seven and one at five. Unbeaten Cincinnati at six. Michigan just lost to uh, Michigan State. Hold strong. They're at seven ahead of unbeaten Oklahoma and unbeaten Wake Forest. Notre Dame at 10. They're one loss to Cincinnati. What'd you think? Uh, three things stood out. One, Oregon's in the driver's seat. Went out. I think that was the big question mark was Ohio State. They they they, they factored in head-to-head. You saw it times. Iowa below Wisconsin. Uh, you saw Fresno State, you know, be- above San Diego State. They factor in head-to-head as they should. Two, uh, Mel Tucker. I mean, is this his second year there, guy? Uh, or second third? year Michigan State, number two. He, he has. I mean, you talk about just to be this good, this fast, Honestly, USC and LSU might offer him the job. It's not inconceivable if you go, they both offered him the job. Like What he's doing there, everyone already thought highly of him when he got the Colorado job. That win last week is incredible. And uh, and three is, and Herbie said this like after they kind of released it all, Oklahoma, get ready. If they start winning games, they're going to move up. I mean, they play Baylor this week. Uh, they still have to play Iowa State. They still play Oklahoma State, who I'm pretty sure only has one. Maybe they have two losses now. But Oklahoma State's a solid team. Like, that's going to be a good win. And uh, is Oklahoma State even there? Yeah, yeah they're right, ranked oh, they're 7-1. and one. So they, they get to play – look, guy, they get to play Baylor and Oklahoma State. So Oklahoma still gets to play 11-12. and 12. I don't think it's inconceivable if Michigan screws up. Now, Ohio State's above them. I guess Ohio State's going to have the opportunity to play Michigan State and Ohio State, right? So it's – Really, if Alabama beats Georgia, those two teams are in. Right. And then the winner of the Big Ten is in. And then if Oregon, which is no, I mean, you know better than me, no lock for them just to win out, right? It's, no. it's already been a little rocky. Yeah, it has been. Um, you know, they were underdogs to or, to UCLA a couple weeks ago, even though they were ranked very highly. Um, a couple Not of to things. Us, though. Not to us, no. <laughs> a couple of things to your point. One, unbeaten Power Five conference champions get into the playoff, okay? So if Oklahoma finishes unbeaten, they're in. What I just said doesn't necessarily apply to Wake Forest, though, okay? So there's a difference. But but you think if, let's say, Alabama beats Georgia, you think one of those two teams would get knocked out if Oregon takes care of business and Ohio State takes care of business? Yeah, I think they're both in. Alabama and Georgia would both be in in that instance. Um, I I don't know. It'd be tough. But I'd be surprised if we end up at the end of the year with an unbeaten Power 5 out. It just doesn't happen. Oklahoma would have some great wins if they went out, right, and they're undefeated. Yeah, and, and the they'd kid. be unbeaten, and, you know, we'd be further away from remembering that they skated by on Kansas, right? They barely got by Kansas. But you're right. It does get complicated if you have one loss Georgia, one loss Alabama, one loss Oregon, one loss Ohio State, and I guess Michigan State would be out in that instance, right? Or they'd be one loss Michigan State. It'd be pretty complicated. Yeah, I, I think Oklahoma undefeated with really good wins would it'd be hard to hold them out. I, right? I yes, they sixty one percent, sixty one percent of the final four are one loss in the history of the college football playoff. That means only thirty nine percent are unbeaten, and a Power Five unbeaten conference champion gets in. So you know that if you're on an unbeaten Power Five conference champion, you're Oklahoma is pretty safe. Thirty nine percent of the playoff participants in the history of the playoff were not in the first poll. Okay. Good. So the That's odds a good that stat guy, well, odds of, I did the math the other day. Cause I was just curious how much does this first poll tell us? Okay. 39% of the teams that participate in the playoff are not in the first poll, but years are different. Some years, all four go in some years, only one of four. So who knows? Okay. Um, I don't think Oregon is totally safe here. I'm not convinced they're totally safe. Now, you're right saying you're now, saying even if they take care of business? Yes. I think they're in really good shape. I think they should be safe if they're a one-loss champion from getting passed from by Ohio State. But the committee put them at 4 
not three. There's a one-loss team two spots ahead of them, then Michigan State, then them. If the committee had put them at three, I'd feel a little better about it. But the committee put them at four, and we know that the teeth of Ohio State's schedule is still coming up, and that there really isn't much teeth left in Oregon's schedule. Now, Utah you know, could be a top 25 team by the time they play. Um, I do think that they uh, are good enough to be a top 25 team. I'm speaking of Utah here. But that's about it. Now, maybe they could, you know, they could play him twice, I guess. You, you, you know a problem for Oregon's going to be, Guy? Ohio State, their last two regular season games, Michigan State, Michigan. Well, it's three and seven. And even if Michigan were to lose to Penn State, they'd still be a top, you know, if that game's relatively close, top 20 team. Those are two pretty good wins. And then, potentially, Minnesota, who I, I'm not sure where they are. Where's Minnesota on this list? On the top twenty-five, the the coal, they uh, they would put twentieth at six and two, and they could potentially play them. I think they opened up the season with them again, but they would play them maybe a ten and two team in the championship game because of the way the divisions are. So they'd have three straight games, two potentially in the top ten at minimum, top five, fifteen, and then Minnesota. That's pretty good. Like we said with Oklahoma, they get to play Baylor, who's ranked really high, and they could potentially play them again in the conference championship and Oklahoma state who just might be at the time 11 and you know, or nine and one or 10 and one, like those wins, Oregon just lacks that ability. It's not their fault, but their conference just doesn't have that in the back right now. Yeah. So um, now here's what Oregon has left, John. I think they would love for Alabama to like lose to Auburn. Right. And just knock them out. Yeah. So the sec championship game doesn't mean anything. I think that I think if you're Oregon and right. Ohio State, you're rooting for Alabama to lose to, in the Iron Bowl, right? Right, right. And you know the other thing is Purdue. We look is a we Big just Ten. Looked, is a Big Ten team a lock? Um, you're saying if Ohio State were to lose again, let's say Michigan State loses to Ohio State, and then somehow Ohio State loses a game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, feels to, unlikely. To your point, P- Purdue is an explosive offensive team. There's still a ways to go for Michigan State. They got to beat Purdue. They got to beat Ohio State. Um, I, Purdue also still plays Ohio State, so it shouldn't be a problem. But Purdue can score points. They're one of the top passing offenses in the country. Now we saw them, you know, beating number two Iowa. I think everyone kind of believed Iowa was not really the second best team in the nation when that game was played. You see but, Mel Tucker's rant on social media about Purdue historically has knocked off more top five teams when they've been unranked than like any team in the country. They knocked he off just, specifically the second ranked team. He started list. He started listing the years, and it was like you know 2010, 2012, 2004, 97. He, I mean, he went back to like the fifties. He listed them all. <laughs> That's pretty good. I did not see that. Yeah. Um, I think here's look. I, I think that if you've beaten somebody head to head and you have the same number of losses, right? Oregon, Ohio State. Then you should get the Oregon. What's the, should, what's the point of the sport? What's, right. What's the point of playing the games? We know that every other sport, when there's a tiebreaker, the first thing we go to is head to head. But what? So why I say I don't think Oregon's safe? It's not about what I believe. It's just I'll believe the committee. It's easy to do that on November second. It's different to do that at the end of the year. Um, but here's the good news for Oregon: they've done it. Oregon did it, and I also think Oregon's going to have some opportunities. I think Utah will be a top 25 team when they play them. I think they may see them again in the conference championship game, if that's what happens. Washington, who they play this week, not very good. But that game's 430 on ABC. It's a rivalry game. Oregon plays up to opponents. Oregon plays down to opponents. Jimmy Lake's already talked some shit. He's the coach of the Washington Huskies. Oregon is going to play up in this game because it's a rivalry game. It's on ABC at 430. So everybody can see what Oregon looks like in this game. I think their defense will look good in this game. And um, so I think they got a good opportunity here. Or, look, because here's the thing with Oregon. They deserve to be where they are, I believe. But they also did lose to under 500 Stanford. They lost that game. They if had they, the ball if they were undefeated, they, If they were undefeated, they'd be two, I think, in Alabama. If they were undefeated, they would be the number two team in the nation. Totally agree with yeah. that statement. Yep. And they'd be, they'd be really in good shape. Yeah. But they could lose a game and stay and stay in the top twenty five. I'd stay in the top four. But that's not what happened. But I do think, again, like I said, I think they're in the right spot. I'll believe the committee looks at the head to head with Ohio State. I think that Cincinnati is six is very telling. That's good for Oregon. 
Because Cincinnati doesn't play anybody the rest of the way. Cincinnati doesn't do anything that can help them. Cincinnati can't get ahead of Ohio State and Oregon if those two teams keep winning. What if... And they could Michigan, get passed by these other teams behind them. What if Michigan State loses to Ohio State, but then Michigan runs the table and beats Ohio State? Does Michigan State get in over Michigan just based on You're the You're saying Oregon? if Michigan State's a one loss... Their loss is Ohio but, State, yep. but then Michigan Harbaugh's biggest win of his life against Ohio State at home in the big house. Because Michigan is sneaky not dead. I mean, Indiana, Penn State, Maryland, and then Ohio State, that win would be enormous, especially if Ohio State beats Michigan State by a couple touchdowns, right? It feels very unlikely, but <laughs> just throwing it out there. That's interesting. Um, I just think Michigan State and Oklahoma, now they're different because Michigan State has a loss, Oklahoma doesn't, still have a lot of ammo. Yeah, what would be, I guess the question would be, what would be the tiebreaker there? Get You're right, the because I don't, because I don't think Michigan would get in the conference championship. Michigan State would, I would imagine. Well, there'd be a three-way tie in that scenario, right? You're saying Ohio State beats Michigan State. Yeah, feels Michigan a very beats... unlikely scenario because Michigan is going to be like a 10-point underdog at minimum. Yeah, I'm not sure what the tiebreaker there in the Big Ten would be, but to me it would it would go to... Because they're all on the goes... same side of the division. Right, whoever goes to the Big Ten title game and wins the Big Ten championship would I would then I think would get, get in. in. Yeah. Um but to your point, not if Oregon is still a one loss, Oklahoma's unbeaten, Alabama beats Georgia in the title game in the SEC. Then your one loss Big Ten team's probably out. Do you know a team we have not mentioned not one time yet for we've been talking for eleven minutes? Who? Cincinnati. I just mentioned them. I said they're behind Ohio State and Oregon, and they can't get ahead of them if those teams win because they oh, don't have anybody left. I mean, they got Clemson uh, still, but that's not. Cincinnati plays Clemson this year? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking Wake Forest has Clemson still. My mistake. Yeah. Wake did Forest me- has Clemson. Did you mention Cincinnati? I did. I said they can't oh. get ahead of Ohio State or, or Oregon as long as those two teams keep winning because they're not going to have any wins that bolster their schedule at this point. Their strength of schedule is 103. Yeah. Oregon's 15. And they could easily get f- passed by Michigan and Oklahoma if they start playing well, right? Yeah, Cincinnati's- well, I mean, they will get they will get passed by Oklahoma if Oklahoma keeps winning. Yeah. You know, UT- UTSA, who's ranked, I think, 16th in the AP poll, just gave their coach a 10-year extension, did not sniff the top 25. And you know what? When not. you look at their schedule, they they did it right. They shouldn't have been ranked. I, I, I think they did a pretty good job with this first top 25. I do too. Like I said, what I go back to is, are, do they mean it when they say the head-to-head Oregon over Ohio State? Do they mean it? Um, I think there's, there's a lot of pressure on on Mario right now moving forward. Do you think the rest of the season just to yeah. like get this done? Yes. Yes. Probably more than any of these other coaches because Mel Tucker's but, somewhat playing with house money. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. But I also think that they. I think the fact that they're ranked fourth helps them. I agree. With a loss. I mean, internally, helps their guys. They've tended to, if uh, you know, they've tended not to give their best shot to bad teams. And um, I, I would say this, the four teams remaining on their schedule can beat them if they don't, if they don't play well. Washington, would be the least the, likely. Who, Oregon State would be beat their them last li- year. Who would be their likely opponent in the conference championship game? I, Utah is two games up in the Pac-12 South. So Utah just about has – the Pac-12 South is basically over unless Utah does something dumb because they've yeah. got head-to-head tiebreakers over every team behind them. Arizona State, UCLA, and USC. Calvin Johnson just broke his ankle at USC, so they're done. That's right. Drake London's out. <laughs> uh, and they were not in the mix anyway, so they were several games back. Herm's so taking I think, heat. Yeah, Herm's taking heat. Um, they play SC this week, though. They'll play up for that game, ASU. Um but I, I think this is the – I think Oregon – I think people were afraid. I think there was a lot of positive – I heard from a lot of just national voices like Herb Street over the last week that said a ba- basically what you said, what we, we agree on. If you play head-to-head – Chris Peterson said this on Saturday. If you play head-to-head and that's the only difference between the two of you, then what are we doing if we're not using head-to-head as the tiebreaker? And once they decided they wanted to do that, that screwed Cincinnati because Cincinnati couldn't be in between those two teams. One thing I think that the the other teams outside of the top two got lucky is that Alabama lost a game. Because if those two teams, if the SEC was facing off two undefeated teams in the SEC, they would both be getting in. And I think Georgia could beat Alabama and knock Alabama out completely. Well, I mean, they're going to be 
I mean, I, I would imagine people have already made the projection for Middlecoff Sportsbook right here. I would say six point favorite. Like they're not going to be like a one point favorite in that game. I think they're going to be a pretty substantial favorite in that game. Six points, you know, in an SEC championship game against Absolutely. Alabama is pretty fucking big. Absolutely. So and hell, they might win that game. You know, like. 20 to set like you might just not be able to score on them because i don't know if any i mean could georgia is the favorite to win the whole thing this year and i think i i I do think the one team you know i know oregon beat ohio state but if ohio state's firing at all cylinders just might have the firepower maybe to give them a game to give georgia a game yeah just because oregon's missing their star running back is he out for the season cj verdell is out but travis die their other running back has been is very is really good they recruit sometimes would start anyway and remember, they didn't have Kayvon Thibodeau in that Ohio State game. Maybe the would number Oklahoma, one pick in the draft. Would Oklahoma have any chance with this young quarterback to make some noise if they got in? You would think, right? He seems like a special player. You would think they could at least – yeah, it would be tough for them to be the four, to be the four seed, right, and have to play Georgia in the first game. I'd watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no Clemson, John. And look, the other thing I'll say, it's just Michigan State, there's, still, there's, a, ways, there's a ways to go for everybody. But for Michigan State, there's still a ways to go. Beat Purdue this week. Yeah, to, to me, for Michigan State, this was the moment, like, your coach is probably gone. That's what, to me, is crazy about this. Like, damn, he did this this that fast. Like, the other ADs are like, I want that guy. They're going to lose a coach. Michigan State's going to lose a coach to LSU directly again? Do you think so? Uh, I mean, he's been in the SEC. He was the he was a defensive coordinator at Georgia. Like, he's to me, he makes a lot of sense for LSU. Does any human being beside Tom Izzo, the equivalent, right, turn down, you know, Michigan State for LSU? If you're if you're kind of been in that region, like yeah, be, if that's not, a, if that's your if those are your people, yeah, yeah, it'd be a historic. You moment can win a national championship there. Yeah, hell, he might be able to do it here. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right, 